Hi, and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be going through how to use VAM as a way to approximate power. Now, you might be wondering, why would I do that if I have a power meter? Well, there might be instances where you don't have a power meter. So one example is I'm about to go on a holiday to Italy and I'm going to hire a bike. That bike won't have a power meter. So uh, I normally struggle with pacing myself up hills uh, and I normally look at my power meter a la staring at stems and I use that to keep me at my threshold or just below my threshold so that I don't blow up spectacularly on some of the longer climbs. Um, so I'm particularly worried about this going to Italy. Some of these like the Stelvio, you see the iconic horse category cl climbs with the Giro. We're even going to France so I might be seeing some of the Alps as well. So I'm really worried about that. Um, about not going too deep. Um, the other situation that came that I came across was that um, I was out riding with my friend the other day and I, I could tell that my power meter numbers weren't quite right and uh, I then flicked over to Van to have a look at that and that correlated with a different set of numbers but I only knew that because I've been sort of researching this topic. So it was a way for me to cross check how my power meter was behaving. Anyway, um, so in order for me to get through uh, the concept, we might have to do a bit of a history lesson um, of what actually is VAM, who invented it, and then how do we actually apply that to um, cycling. So a quick history lesson. So back before power meters were cheap enough to be able to be put on most bikes, um, the van was invented by a sports scientist, a pretty infamous sports scientist, Dr. Ferrari. So for all of Dr. Ferrari's sins, he was a very, very good sports scientist and he was very good at measuring cycling performance. Um, cynically, it was probably to try and figure out how effective the drugs were, but he was still able to measure um, how fast cyclists were and whether or not they were getting better or not. And he came up with uh, this concept called VAM, and in Italian, Velocita Ascensionale Media, which loosely translated to English means vertical ascent meters per hour, or average ascent at speed. Um, in essence, it's a measure of how fast you are vertically climbing up a hill. Now, we don't climb straight in one line, we go up a gradient. So, the steeper the gradient, the faster the van. So he was quick to develop this formula um, and the relationship between van and power output is expressed as follows. So watts per kilo is basically van in meters per hour divided by a gradient factor um, times 100. So to, and in order to work out the gradient factor it's 2 plus this percentage grade divided by 10. So this fa gradient factor if your gradient is 6%, then your gradient factor is 2.6. And if your gradient is 11%, your gradient factor is 3.1. In essence, it's just a way to scale the gradient into the formula. And we could go into that into a whole another episode um, in just how you calculate speed and power to um, climbing and all those variables uh, into the physics of it. Uh, but for now, let's just assume that that formula is correct. So if that's correct, we can rearrange the equation to be VAM in meters per hour is equal to the relative power in watts per kilo times the gradient factor. Um, so if I know the gradient and I know what my threshold power is, uh, I then know what my VAM should be uh, that I would like to hold on that climb. So here's a fancy little table that I prepared earlier. So in this you can see that there's uh, watts per kilo on the left hand side and the gradient along the top. And for each of the gradients it can, and watts per kilo I want to hold, it tells me what my VAM should be. Um, so how does this table compare to real life? So recently I rode with uh, my friend uh, out, out, out of Mansfield, out towards Whitfield. And we took Old Ptolemy Road. Now, if you know Old Ptolemy Road from doing the tour at Mansfield, um, 
you know what a bugger that this hill actually is. Um, in fact, some people have nicknamed it the Tall Malay. So, um, what I did was I took the average watts, I took the uh, elevation gained, and I took the uh, distance traveled, calculated an average gradient, average watts, calculated my watts per kilo using my, from my power meter, and also calculated what my van was based on those two dimensions. I then also used what my estimated weight was and my van to then reverse engineer what my watts per kilo would be by the formula and compared that to my power meter. And what did I get? So as you can see from this ride, I was roughly uh, bang on actually on this one. So old Tommy Road, um, where was I? I was within 1% actually. My calculation was within 1% uh, or 0.92%. So I thought that was pretty good. So what I then did was I had a look across 23 other um, rides that I had done. And from that I discovered, well actually, this is actually correlated pretty well with them across what's peculiar. And um, when I took the measured versus my calculated, it comes up with this chart. And you can see it's pretty close. And particularly in the key region of between three and four watts per kilo, um, it seemed to be within that eight to 1100 VAM. Um, and it seemed to be really, really uh, consistent. So a couple of stats, if you're into that, standard deviation was about 4%. If you want to convert that to confidence intervals, um, two standard deviations means you're 95% likely to fall within 8%. And I mean, it's not perfect, but it's certainly, you know, I'd rather be plus minus 8% with a 95% confidence interval than uh, uh, nothing at all. So now that we understand VAM and how it relates to watts per kilo and gradients and all that, how do I actually set this up? So the first step is you've got to turn your Wahoo on and pair it to your phone. Now, then once you go onto your, to your app, you've got to then go to settings. And from settings, you go to customize pages. Now from customize pages, I normally go to this climbing one because on the climbing one, it normally shows the actual um, gradient. Particularly if I'm, if you've loaded up the profile or a route, it's got the gradient in there. So I normally set it up with those fields. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says VAM in meters per hour, the grade. I normally have cadence and current speed versus workout average. And what that actually then means is when I go over to my, gar uh, to my Wahoo, if I need to, I can scroll out a little bit. So I've just got those two uh, set up. So the order is actually pretty important and how you set this up. But anyway, VAM is number one, grade is number two. I normally have RPM and K kilometers per hour. You might choose to have um, heart rate or some other metric. But um, on this one, because I'll, I'll likely have heart rate across on the LED lights at the top, I'll mainly focus on VAM and grade. And from there, if you know what your uh, VAM is, what I would then say is using the table, I know that at 5% and at 1000 VAM, that equates to four watts per kilo. And if I wanna keep that same power, right, uh, across a range of gradients, I know that for every 1% increase above that 5%, I've got to add 40 uh, VAM. So at 8%, I would need to add 120 VAM, so 1120 VAM. Similarly, if the gradient was only 3%, then I'd know I'd have to be 120 VAM less, so I'd only be at 880. So I can roughly scale that um, uh, VAM and keep the same power output. And all that's doing is on that table, just selecting one of those rows and just looking straight across that whole uh, row and making sure that it lines up uh, and you know your increments. But it's roughly 40 uh, between that 
you know, somewhere between 35 to 45 van that you have to add for every 1% in that three to four and a half watts per kilo um, power output, which is where most, uh, what I would say, serious riders or I think probably B grade riders, if you look at Kogan's uh, power charts, is where uh, those that are actually interested in looking at watts per kilo and all that kind of thing um, are likely to be operating. Now there are some limitations as to when VAM is appropriate. I mean, it obviously doesn't work if you're going downhill. Uh, it doesn't work on the flats particularly well if you're on 0% gradient. It also doesn't work on hills where there's also a bit of descending in it because that also throws the VAM calculations out. So the ones that it does work well on are long steady state climbs, probably more than about three or four minutes in length. They, those tend to be the ones that uh, VAM works really well on. So hopefully that helps you um, pace yourself up climb. So if you don't have a power meter, um, or if you your power meter is not quite right, or you need something else to correlate the numbers, or if you uh, are looking to on a new bike and you, that doesn't have a power meter, um, that's these are some of the ways in which you can use VAM to help you um, calibrate. So if you've enjoyed this content. Um, Please let me know how you go down below and using VAM in your cycling and also um, click subscribe um, if you're interested in more of this kind of content. Bye for now.